we're going to jump right in. We got a lot to talk about. We're going to start um, with a discussion of the capital plan that the administration is bringing forward uh, to the city council and the board of finance tonight. And then at the, after that, we also have a briefing about what we're calling the South End Construction Coordination Plan, which represents a significant um, breakthrough in how we're trying to go about the building of a vast amount of infrastructure in the South End, including the Champlain Parkway and the Rail Yard Enterprise projects. So um, we're gonna start with uh, the capital plan. And um, we have a, a slide deck here, we'll, we'll step forward with, um, I am joined in this discussion by our chief administrative officer, Catherine Shad, our uh, Shad, excuse me, um, our director of the Department of Public Works, Chapin Spencer, um, who has been a leader with this plan for many years, as has uh, Martha Keenan, who is our capital and spe special projects director. And we're gonna hear from each of them at different points in this presentation. Um, in a lot of ways, this effort that we're talking about today is the continuation, it's really the next big stage in something that began back in March of 2014. Um, I made a commitment in the state of the city that year that we were really for the first time in modern memory going to come forward with a comprehensive capital plan that would address all of the different assets the city is responsible for and um, that we were going to attempt to really elevate our investment um, and stewardship of uh, a number of assets that um, had been underinvested in for a, a long period of time. Um, we then went and, and over the next couple of years, we did that. We came forward with the first draft of a plan a year later in April and in September of 2016, or really the fall of 2016, and first the council and then the voters approved a uh, what we call the sustainable infrastructure plan. It was in total, it was about a $50 million plan, including $27 million of general obligation bonding, which was the largest general obligation bonding um, in many years for, for infrastructure. And we are now basically five years into that effort and a lot has happened. And um, why don't we uh, go to the next slide and we can get into some of the, the details of, of what has happened. We, we, so over 14 miles of sidewalks have been rebuilt uh, since 2016, which is a, about a tripling of how much sidewalk reinvestment we had been doing previously. We have made significant advancements with a, in a variety of areas of bike infrastructure. Our annual investment in our streets, the amount of mileage of new roads that we build every year has basically doubled during the five-year period uh, up until this year when we uh, uh, had have encountered some some challenges in this year but we want to get back to that doubling going forward we have rehabilitated almost the entire uh, uh, bike path seven miles of it were done earlier this year we are now working on uh, the final mile through oak ledge park and when that is complete, um, we will essentially be done with that effort, but for some uh, very targeted uh, special structures that still need to be replaced. Basically, the, the uh, bridge um, uh, uh, in going into the North Beach campground is the main thing that will be unfinished. Have made a number of investments in, in our parks, many investments in our parks, including a, a maintenance facility that really helps us take care of uh, the city's assets through, um, in the northern part of the city in particular. We have made many investments in city buildings that had, were long overdue. We've made in, oh, long overdue uh, in, uh, IT investments, including important security features that have, has kept uh, the city data secured. Um, we, if you want to move to the next slide, Samantha, we um, have improved our security systems. We have created a really critical system that we've made major investment in, in is in our asset management system. We've also kind of resourced and staffed that effort in a different way. 
Uh, so we have improved software as well as um, a team that uh, a capital committee team reference there that meets on a regular basis to um, make sure we are renewing our fleet and making investments in our buildings in a sustainable way and in a way where the highest needs are targeted first. And increasingly that, that, that team has been tasked with making sure that we are um, electrifying and moving towards uh, away from fossil fuel built uh, burning technologies as much as possible. And in this five year period, after an extended period in which we really our large fleet of vehicles was aging and was in trouble, we have replaced 28% of our vehicles over the last five years. So, um, With that as the context leading up till now, we are proposing that the council take action tonight to send to the voters a, a, the next phase essentially of our um, infrastructure effort. And as part of that to uh, send to the voters a $40 million general obligation bond. This would be a $40 million bond would be one piece of about a $150 million plan um, uh, of investment that would uh, be implemented over the next three years. And uh, that the, uh, the other sources presentation we, we get, um, we kind of lay that out. But um, before doing that, you know, why I think a, certainly a question that will be on a lot of voters' minds, especially as after we've just come through a challenging reappraisal period is, you know, why is now the right time for another general obligation bond? And here are the main reasons as I see them. One, we are, we, over the last five years, we have started to catch up. Um, on uh, really many years of underinvestment and of deferred maintenance. We knew that we were not going to be done at the end of this five-year period. When we passed the initial bond, we projected for folks that there would be a need for more investment in the second five years of that effort. And um, that, that is now where we are. We have completed the first five years. We still have a lot of maintenance to catch up on. The, I believe for, from my conversations with people, while there are certainly concerns about property taxes, there's also a strong belief that another part of responsible management of the city is to take care of our infrastructure, to take care of these historic assets that have been built over generations and which need investment um, uh, if they are going to stay strong. And we saw that in our budget uh, work this year when we had surveys about this year's budget, one of the, the item that got the strongest support was investments in infrastructure. We've also seen that whenever we've gone to the voters in recent years for investment in one element or another of our infrastructure, not only the general obligation funding, but the water bonds that we've gone out for all have gotten very strong support. And we think that support is, is still there. Um, <clears throat> if we have a significant amount of local funds that is going that we can invest in our infrastructure that is going to position us well to seek out these other opportunities for federal infrastructure funding for using ARPA dollars potentially and for using state climate and infrastructure funding and in a moment uh, when we go through these other sources of funds that we're going to pursue uh, you know, you can see we are hopeful that those will be quite significant. Having flexible local dollars will put us in much better position to, to leverage those other sources of funds. Um, further, we um, know that right now interest rates remain very low. Uh, they're, they've been very low for years. There's no guarantee that, that that will continue, especially given all the uncertainty and the fluidity in the in the, econ in the economy right now, um, we are in unprecedented in an unprecedented economic recovery, and there have been signs of inflation in many sectors. It would not be shocking to see that start to happen in the uh, long-term borrowing markets as well. By bonding now, by going to voters in November, um, we can go out and and uh, secure those low interest rates now before they shift. Um, 
Another important thing that's weighing on us as we make this you know, tough decision about coming forward at this point is that we are already behind in our plans by about a year. We had um, long talked about with the council and, and uh, uh, various committees that are very engaged in this, that we had planned to go for the next round of infrastructure investment in, in 2020. Um, the pandemic made it impossible to do that. And as a result, we have really had to patch together um, our investments for uh, this current year. Fortunately, we have these additional federal dollars that's made it possible to do that. Um, but that is was a one-year strategy. If we do not go and bond now, this November, there will be an impact on the calendar year 2022 construction season, and we'll lose some of that momentum that we think has been so important over the last five years towards changing the trajectory in our infrastructure uh, investment. <clears throat> and finally, um, we have major federal infrastructure projects already underway. People know that we are in construction on the, um, Shel the Shelburne Road Rotary, a long awaited project. We are pursuing and spending significant dollars already and these will uh, dramatically expand when we get these projects into construction, the Champlain Parkway and the Rail Yard Enterprise Project. If we, we need the, the local share of these projects is very small. It ranges from about 2% to 10% of any given federal and state project. Um, but when you're talking projects of this scale, there is still millions of dollars involved. And this bond, uh, a yes vote on this bond will include three and a half, approximately three and a half million dollars of um, investment that will help us leverage more than $60 million in other federal and state funding on these major transportation projects. So um, with that, I am now gonna hand over the presentation, hand over the Zoom to Chapin Spencer, our Director of Public Works, who has been a real leader in these infrastructure efforts since the beginning, going all the way back to the, the, those announcements and decisions back in 2014, 2015, 2016. I am grateful to have Chapin's sustained partnership as we get to this next critical uh, step in this effort. And I'm gonna hand over the Zoom to him to walk through some detail on how um, we are proposing to invest the uh, $40 million of bond proceeds if the voters do support it um, in November. So Chapin, handing it over to you. Great, thank you very much, Mayor, appreciate it. Uh, it is an honor to, to get to do this work, and uh, we've made tremendous progress over the last five years, uh, but there is much more uh, to do. And the general fund is responsible for a broad array of asset types, and you're seeing that here on this slide. This summarizes here uh, the breakout by asset type of the proposed $40 million general fund uh, general obligation bond, uh, as you'll see at the top proposed uh, additional money for sidewalks so we continue to triple the sidewalk uh, production as the mayor talked about. Uh, additional funding for streets and bridges. Uh, bridges were not a major component of the last round, but this year uh, we are proposing to bring forward uh, funds to address uh, existing structures, the Queen City Park Road Bridge, uh, the Rock Point Bridge, the uh, Winooski Burlington Bridge, uh, that need attention in addition to enhanced paving. Uh, information and technology, as the mayor said, we must continue to keep our communication safe and accessible. Uh, bike inter infrastructure and intersection improvements. There are a number of spot improvements in the city for intersections, such as the misaligned Pearl and Prospect Street uh, intersections, as well as bike improvements, uh, such as uh, building out the Winooski Avenue corridor uh, that was called for in plan BTV walk bike. We've made good progress in implementing that plan, but there's more work to be done. Uh, the mayor also touched on uh, needing funding for matching the significant amount of state and federal dollars that we've secured. And that is listed here as local match for grants. Uh, that in large part can be Champlain Parkway, Rail Yard Enterprise Project, but we also have grants for smaller projects like the Intervale Road side path and uh, the Lake Street uh, side path extension. 
Uh, we've talked uh, about bridges uh, as well. The bridges are, are itemized here uh, as I discussed previously. Project management, uh, this is uh, the resource to really help uh, staff and our consultant team drive and complete successfully this uh, significant enhanced workload. And uh, that funding really helps us uh, resource the efforts and the project management uh, sufficiently. Civic buildings, uh, the city has uh, over 40 buildings across the city that it needs to maintain. Uh, we have done uh, some significant work over the first period of the sustainable infrastructure plan, uh, but this is a robust effort to uh, do a lot of the deferred maintenance on structures across the city. In addition, uh, parks and parks facilities uh, is represented here with a proposed $3 million reinvestment uh, from the boathouse uh, to structures and to, to ball fields across the city. Uh, fleet is another key area. Uh, we replaced several key fire apparatus in the first round of sustainable infrastructure funding. This would help address remaining uh, end of life fire apparatus and snow plows and sidewalk tracks. Uh, this is part of a sustainable fleet package that I've been really pleased to work on uh, each year we've brought forward uh, dozens of replacement vehicles uh, at, who are at end of life and looking at alternative fueled uh, vehicles as part of that as we uh, implement the net zero uh, energy plan. Public safety infrastructure uh, relates to a communication tool that we uh, need for both fire and police to ensure responsive and timely communications. Uh, this is a complete overhaul of an outdated communication system. And last but not least, Memorial Auditorium, $10 million proposal uh, to really a uh, placeholder to allow us, uh, the city collectively, to figure out uh, the best path forward. And I think the mayor uh, is going to touch on you know, a range of what those options could be. Yeah, great, Chapin. I think, sure, let, let's... Uh, um talk for a moment about the situation with Memorial Auditorium. We're, we're in a moment where um, we know that um, action is going to be needed with Memorial in, in the coming um, a relatively short period of time. For, for decades, we have seen uh, deferred maintenance build up within Memorial uh, Auditorium. This goes back well before the start of this administration. We took uh, we felt we had to take action in this administration to actually close the building to because we were concerned about safety within it. Um, there was uh, a active um, <clears throat> redevelopment effort that was um, working towards a bond vote um, when the pandemic hit. And the pandemic really has set back those efforts. Um, and right now, from my perspective, one of three things could happen with Memorial Auditorium. One, uh, we, we either need to make significant investment in the building just to stabilize and reopen it and keep it from being a vacant building. Um, that, will, that probably would cost um, something approaching maybe even a full $10 million just to essentially stabilize and reopen the building based on past estimates. Um, alternatively, um, the council uh, uh, with working with the public could decide that it, that there it just there was not a viable route there and this would give us um, uh, the funds that that, that would uh, would <clears throat> um, it would give us the ability if the council and the public did not want to save the, the building um, to uh, transition the site. And then finally, um, there is an active discussion going on right now. And in fact, we're expecting the school district to make a decision on this uh, tonight as to whether the Memorial Gateway Block should be considered as one of the possible sites for um, a new high school. Um, and we are, um, if the, the um, <clears throat> school district were to move forward with a plan to move to permanently put the high school in the downtown, um, at this site, this would give the city the ability to participate in a uh, dual use um, plan if, uh, if, that, um, if that goes forward. So essentially this gives us flexibility to act and act relatively quickly 
um, uh, as is needed in the, in the coming months and years. Let's keep going with the presentation. The, um, th this spreadsheet um, is a summary of the $150 million of uh, total capital projects that the city will be pursuing um, over the next three years. And basically what you have is um, along the, the rows here are the different um, uses of those funds and the columns each represent a different source. And you can see we will be pr pursuing and uh, a, a federal, we are expecting to be able to pursue federal infrastructure uh, funding if the uh, bill in Congress goes forward. Um, we are already using um, federal and tra state transportation grants for something uh, approaching ap approximately $60 million um, in funds on the projects we talked about before. And then there are another number of other um, columns, sources called out here that will also be part of this total plan. The bond proceeds column, it, the one basically in the middle where you see some investment on each row, this is uh, a piece of each of these rows would be going to the voters for funding per this, per this sheet. Um, let's go to the next, um, <clears throat> next slide. And I think here I'd like to introduce Catherine Shad and uh, ask Catherine, our CAO, to walk you through um, why this is um, a responsible plan in terms of our overall fiscal management, how this fits into uh, the uh, various efforts and policies we have in place to ensure that we do not do too much borrowing and what the um, affordability impact of this, uh, of this effort will be if it is adopted by voters. What can voters count on? What should they be thinking the impact on them is gonna be as they, if they get a chance to vote on this? So Catherine, over to you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so in September of 2018, uh, City Council uh, established the debt management policy. And that policy establishes both the philosophy and specific guidelines around the use of debt. Um, and that is meant to be used in conjunction with the city charter um, to help us figure out uh, exactly how much debt we can and should take on. Um, and so as you can see from this slide, uh, the first couple of rows, the first one is the city debt. Um, and this includes the proposed $40 million bond, um, along with everything else that we know now, including debt retiring over time. Um, the second line is the school's projected debt. And then um, as you see on the second two thirds of the slide, um, these are important ratios that are part of our debt management policy. Um, the first one is um, the limits on the city's direct or general obligation debt. Um, and as you can see, they're tied um, to our Moody's credit rating. Um, we want to see how that will affect our credit rating um, because fiscal management has always been an important part of this administration. Um, there are two ways that we um, and Moody's measure this. The first one that you can see here is our debt or proposed debt as a percentage of the full value of our tax base. And the second one is the debt as a percentage of our budgeted operating revenue. And that excludes transfers. So you can see uh, in the middle column, there's a target. I have highlighted in orange um, in FY 23, 24, and 25, um, under the proposed $40 million bond, we would slightly exceed the target. 
Now, if you can read that tiny print down at the bottom with the asterisk, you can see that under the management debt management policy, um, although 1.75% is the target, a maximum of 2% is allowed um, if it is approved by the city council. Um, they need to approve reasons for exceeding the target. They need to understand the expectations for the length of time we would exceed the target, the three years listed here, and the plan to bring back within the target, which as you can see, uh, we already have and it's uh, retiring debt. Um, the other thing just worth noting here is um, the second ratio is what we call overlapping debt or the amount of debt both the city's general obligation as well as the school district debt. As you can see um, with this $40 million bond, um, we are well within all of our targets here um, and we understand that they will likely be looking uh, to uh, a vote in March, and um, we are allowing for that, Mr. Mayor. Thanks, Catherine, great job with this. I, I just wanted to make um, explicit that what is shown here in terms of the, the school district's debt is, um, if it is basically showing them, correct me if I have this wrong, Catherine, them, pulling down all, all of the debt um, between 22 and 27 that they currently have voter approval for. So essentially the $70 million um, bond that voters approved a couple of years ago, um, I think almost three years ago now. Um, what this also shows in the lower and on the, in the underlap, the overlapping debt section um, below the in the row right below the, the, the final blue row is um, that uh, even at, at $70 million being pulled down, there's considerable additional capacity um, uh, beyond that within this, um, within this policy, uh, if they're uh, for, for, for us to talk about and for the public and the council and the school board to consider. If, um, as we all expect, in that the seventy million dollars is not sufficient, if a new high school is needed, so I think it's good news that they're on both of those two two ways in which we limit the amount of overlapping debt. The ratios there, there's considerable room um, uh, beyond uh, both the forty million dollars that we're proposing, as well as the um, existing uh, debt of borrowing authority that the school district has. Let me take it back over here, Catherine, to talk about taxpayer impact. Great, thank you. Um, as you can see here, um, we are very mindful of the effect of the reappraisal on property taxes. Um, the new median priced home in Burlington is listed here at uh, just over $379,000. Um, and so we've done those calculations of what would the increase in annual tax payment be for homeowners at that level um, to pay for all of these improvements um, that we've been talking about. Um, and so as you can see here, if you average it out, um, divide it out by month, you know, it is, as you can see, about $7 a month up to maybe $13 a month. And so um, we think that is well worth the investment for all of the reasons that um, the mayor talked about. Now is the right time. Um, and I'll hand it back over to you, Mayor. Great, thank you. Um, thank you, Catherine. And um, let's now um, talk a little bit more about just the, the process from here. 
Um, and I wanted to invite uh, Martha Keenan now to, to join us as well. She's really been um, taking the lead uh, in a lot of the public engagement that's taken place up until now. She's been to um, a lot of meetings over this year, um, talking to folks about this plan. And um, why don't you walk us through, Martha, the, the plan, you say a little bit about what you've done up until now in terms of public engagement and, and where, where we're going from here. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Um, yes, I actually started the process of talking with the community in July, and I have met with um, most of the city's commissions, the public works, library, police, parks, fire commissions, um, as well as the TUC, and I had the joy of meeting with the Trusted Community Voices. I've started meeting with each of the NPAs, and uh, it's, it, it's a wonderful thing to be able to talk to the community and uh, help them understand how important this uh, bonding is uh, to the vibrancy of the city. And I, this will continue throughout September and October. We are hoping tonight to seek um, approval from both the Board of Finance and the City Council. And uh, that would allow us to put uh, on the ballot in the special election on November 9th, this bond. And back to you, Mayor. Great. Um, and I wanna just uh, say, a little bit more about how this special election would work if the council does um, uh, support this administration proposal. As, and, and as uh, Martha mentioned, this has uh, does have the endorsement. It's being sponsored by a couple members of the transportation, um, <clears throat> the, the, the council uh, committee, the two committee, the transportation, utility, uh, and what is uh, the transportation environment and utility uh, committee, I believe. Yeah. We always call it the TUC. I'm, I'm struggling to exactly what that acronym stands for, but um, the, the a couple members, two of the members of that uh, council committee are sponsors on the resolution tonight. Uh, if the council um, supports this plan, there, this is a pretty quick turnaround. The There will be ballots printed up right away and approximately uh, September 25th, the ballots would be mailed out to, to all voters and they would have until November 9th to um, return them through the variety of ways we now do. This will be a full, this is basically being done the way we have done the last couple of elections, mail-in balloting, as well as uh, day of, um, uh, day of election uh, in, in person voting as well as drop boxes and uh, the, the ability to come into city hall. So a full on election for um, this item as well as the other proposed special election item, which uh, we had a whole press conference on a couple of weeks ago, uh, revenue bond effort for the Bronx Electric Department. So that's, that's the timetable we're on. Um, and with that, I think that is that the, uh, I think that is the end of the capital plan presentation. And so now let's shift, shift gears quickly to the South End Construction Coordination Plan. And when we're done with this, we will take questions on both. Um, <clears throat> the, the proposed South End Construction Coordination Plan is um, something that is in front of the council for uh, a decision tonight um, in the sense that they are being asked to um, vote for the extension of one of the um, consultant contracts that is working on the Champlain Parkway. And with this approval, there have been many renewals of this contract over the years, uh, that uh, this long standing federally funded project. What is different about this one is that part of this uh, extension of the contract would be uh, to um, <clears throat> Uh, direct the consultants to begin um, implementing a phased plan for the Champlain Parkway. This has always been, this project has always been uh, expected to be built in one extended phase in the past, um, as most federal projects are. Um, however, after months of talking with our federal and state partners, 
Uh, what we are now proposing is a plan, a pragmatic path to uh, build um, a wide variety of infrastructure in the South End um, over the coming years and to do so in a way that really brings about major renewal of the infrastructure in the South End and, and modernization of that uh, infrastructure while reducing community impacts. And with that, um, uh, Chapin, why don't you walk through some of the detail and what people are, are should be expecting in this phase plan if the council supports this. Great, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. As you can see here, there is a wide range of infrastructure projects planned for the South End over the coming five to seven years. And given the uh, community's input coming uh, through COVID and uh, with a number of intensive capital projects on the horizon, we have heard loud and clear that uh, there was a request from the council and members of the public, local businesses, to figure out how we could mitigate impact uh, as we move forward. And as you can see here, uh, we have broken out by year a general uh, approach to the timeline of various projects. Uh, I won't go through each line in particular, but the uh, Champlain Parkway uh, project is in a salmon color. And the first proposed construction contract that the mayor alluded to uh, are the middle three lines, which would basically uh, conduct and complete the improvements between Home Avenue and Kilburn Street, the middle portion of the Champlain Parkway project, and be able to coordinate that around the Shelburne Street roundabout as both Shelburne Street and Pine Street are really the two main uh, corridors into and out of the South End. So by making sure they don't step on each other's toes and are coordinated, that reduces impact. In addition, there's a plan uh, that we've been uh, working on a couple of years ago and are now gonna be bringing back is the renewal of Main Street, the Great Streets Main Street project and wanting to make sure that fits in as well with, uh, with the South End efforts. The Rail Yard Enterprise Project as well, which is a, a project connecting Pine to Battery Street down by the rail yard, uh, is uh, going to be under uh, preliminary engineering in the coming months. And uh, we are seeking to get to construction here in 25, 26. Uh, the Champlain Parkway uh, second phase, the final construction contract we're proposing uh, basically to uh, follow that first phase in such a way that the connection to the interstate, uh, I-189 uh, for the Champlain Parkway would not be connected until the community uh, is ready. And by being able to complete all these other South End infrastructure improvements, uh, including the Rail Yard Enterprise Project, uh, we expect to be able to uh, reduce traffic ultimately in the King and Maple neighborhood uh, and, uh, and minimize overall impact. There are several important objectives as you'll see here for uh, implementing the South End Construction Coordination Plan. Uh, we talked about the minimizing of overall impacts on residents and businesses. It also achieves many of the parkways benefits promptly. And there's a follow-up slide where I'll go into detail about what those benefits would be. Uh, we talked also about uh, making the interstate connection uh, once the community is ready for that by breaking the Champlain Parkway into two construction phases. Uh, the city council and the administration both have to approve uh, each construction contract. And so that really gives the community a large uh, sense of control over when uh, we are ready to embark on each construction phase. So uh, many of the parkway benefits that can be achieved on the short term with this uh, initial construction contract are listed here. A new grid street between Home Ave and Lakeside Avenue. Uh, robust stormwater infrastructure reducing over three tons of sediment from being discharged into Lake Champlain each year. there will be two miles of shared use path, notably a shared use path along Pine Street. Uh, raised intersections uh, at many locations on Pine Street, including a new mid-block crosswalk. Uh, Pine Street will, will get an enhanced uh, makeover with granite curbs, a new sidewalk on the east side, the shared use path on the west side that we discussed, and new uh, pavement and draining. 
but also uh, significant undergrounding uh, of utilities and also replacing of uh, water lines and sewer lines. And lastly, uh, some upgrades to the rail crossings at home in Flynn uh, and on the uh, southern part of the waterfront uh, by Maple and King. So we'll be bringing that uh, to the city council tonight as the mayor uh, discussed. And uh, with any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to team DPW. Happy to answer any questions on how we're trying to renew the South End infrastructure in a comprehensive and robust way. Thank you. Well, don't go anywhere, Chapin. There might be questions right now um, from the members of the media that are with us today. I see a number of you are here. And Samantha, I think we're ready for questions. Okay, the first question will be from uh, Cam Smith at WCAX. And you can go ahead, Cam. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, first questions for uh, Mayor Weinberger uh, in regard to the BDS resolution. Do you see this as a positive step forward for the city council to weigh in on such a complex issue? Or are you concerned for division that this could sow in the community? Thanks, Cam. Um, no, I, I, I think the resolution that was proposed um, is is very problematic, and um, I am encouraged to hear that um, some of the chief sponsors of this may be rethinking this. Um, uh, basically, this resolution would uh, is intended to weaken and, and delegitimize um, a long-standing partner, important partner in the Middle East, uh, the state of Israel. Uh, and um, I'm opposed to it. And I think if the council wants to weigh in on Middle Eastern issues, and, and certainly I am deeply troubled by the current state of the Israeli-Palestinian relations. And if the council wants to weigh in in some way, I think they should go back to scratch, um, reject this resolution, and they could uh, think about uh, starting afresh, um, but I uh, no, I'm a, I'm very much opposed to the the current proposal, and hope the council will reject it. Thank you. And just one last question in regard to uh, the ACLU letter from last week: uh, Do you intend to take any sort of action as a result of the letter? And have you received any feedback from constituents? Yeah, I mean, the feedback I've heard mostly from constituents is just that the ACLU is just completely out of touch with what is going on here in Burlington and the, what they describe. I don't think they even accurately describe their own data in uh, some of the narrative there and um, their sort of general take that we shouldn't worry about public safety right now, that everything is fine, is not consistent with the experience of um, lots of Burlingtonians. And, uh, the action that I do intend to take is to keep working um, in the to shore up our, our public safety infrastructure um, uh, in, in a range of ways. We are continuing to work very hard um, to build new infrastructure. Our community service liaison program is getting some momentum. We will be going out with an RFP um, to add um, more partnerships and work on mental health issues. In the weeks ahead, um, Chief Murad and I are working hard on a retention and recruitment plan. And I do expect that the operational and functional assessment will be complete soon. And once that is done, I expect us to have another um, debate at the city council discussion, hopefully something we can get to consensus with about what the future size of the, the police department should be. So um, uh, we're gonna keep, I don't see anything in that report that would change the, the direction that I've been working towards and Chief Murad has been working towards, which is that we, to, to address the emerging problems that we have right now. Thank you. That was the only request uh, that I received from members of the media. Uh, if we can do a last call and if anyone would like to be recognized you can use the raised hand function right now.
Well, we're seeing if anyone responds to that. I will just say um, this is sort of an advanced briefing for the media uh, presentations that are also going to be given on both of these topics at the Board of Finance and the City Council tonight. So there will um, be more, 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 more discussion and debate of these items. Um, uh, but this, uh, we thought we would do this presentation now as well. If there were additional questions in the media, this might be a good time to address them. But if there are not further questions, I'm not seeing any more. Are you, Samantha? Then we will uh, wrap things up. Thank you all for joining us. I want to thank Chapin, Catherine, and, and Martha for helping make today's presentation. And we will see many of you tonight uh, at the Board of Finance and City Council. Thank you, everyone.